We've talked a bunch of times about the satisfiability problem, and we saw one example of using the satisfiability problem, or the ability to determine whether a propositional formula or a digital circuit was satisfiable or able to produce an output of one or true. Uh, if we could do that, then we could, for example, factor a product of two primes, and which we believe is hard and which is the basis for thinking that the RSA crypto system is secure. Uh, and likewise, lots of other problems that we think are hard would become easy if only we could find a good way to check for satisfiability, which is why everybody thinks that satisfiability is hard. But the converse turns out to be also true, or, or a, a, a dual to that fact, namely, um, there are certain kinds of problems where if you could solve them, then you could solve satisfiability easily, which means that you think this other problem is hard. A concrete example is the coloring problem, which we've been looking at. So let's uh, think about the three coloring problem, where I give you a graph and I want to know whether or not it's three colorable, a simple graph. And what I'm going to argue in this little segment is that if I could figure out whether a simple graph was three colorable in general, then uh, I could determine whether an arbitrary uh, digital circuit was satisfiable, that is, could produce an output of true. And let's see how that goes. So the circuit sat problem is that you're given some digital circuit, where I'm using the standard uh, digital circuit designer symbols for this thing is an OR gate with two inputs and one output, and this is a uh, an inverter or NOT gate with one input and one output, and you connect up a bunch of these OR gates and NOT gates, uh, and you can build a digital circuit out of it. And here are the inputs that are coming in. We can think of these as being either trues or falses or ones and zeros, and there's one output. And the question is, given this wired up circuit, um, is it possible to assign input values that would make the output value true? And that is the, sat the circuit satisfiability problem. Is there an assignment of t's and f's to the inputs that yields output t? Now, by the way, um, I'm only going to work with ors and nots, uh, and you might be used to a somewhat larger repertoire of basic uh, logical gates like ands. But of course, you can simulate an and with three nots and an or. So uh, if you wanted to work with ands, that would be fine. Uh, but we don't need to. The general circuit sat problem comes down to uh, without loss of generality, circuits that are only built out of ors and nots. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you how, given a circuit, I can build a graph in such a way that the trying to three color the graph is going to wind up simulating the operation of the circuit, and in such a way that if the circuit could possibly produce an output true, then the graph would be three colorable. And if the circuit couldn't produce an output true, then the graph won't be three colorable. And the way we're going to do that is to begin with is we're going to build a little gadget, a, a graphical piece of graph uh, whose three colorability is going to behave like an OR gate. Here's what I mean. So here's an OR gate. It's got inputs A and B, which are either, we can think of them as trues and falses. And it's supposed to produce an output, which is the OR of the truth values of A and B. So A or B comes out. And I'm going to build a little graphical gadget that looks like this. It's literally, this is it. We're going to prove why it works in a bit. And it's got, uh, in this case, uh, six vertices, three in black and three bigger ones. The three bigger ones are going to correspond to the input A and the input B and the output A or B. And the idea is that uh, coloring, think of colors as being true and false in a third color. Coloring this little graph is going to have the property that, that the colors associated with A and B, the OR of those colors are going to have to appear here in any three coloring. So this little piece of graph is going to act like an OR gate, and we'll call it an OR gadget, a, a three coloring OR gadget. There's also going to be a NOT gadget. So if I want to simulate an inverter which has A in and not A out, it's actually going to be very easy to do. It's just connecting two vertices. One of them is A, which is a truth value, and the other is not A. In order to achieve that, I have to coerce the colorings of these two uh, vertices to be colors that correspond to true and false. And that's what this little dotted 
uh, magenta line is supposed to be in each case, and I'll explain that in more detail in a minute. But the top level idea here is we're going to build little pieces of graph. One piece of graph, which is just two vertices connected by an edge, is going to act like an inverter, and the other six vertex graph is going to act like an OR gate, and then I'm going to piece together those graphs in a way that looks like the circuit, and the graph coloring is going to simulate the circuit. Um, let's look at that. So here's a typical satisfiability problem. This is an arbitrary circuit out of negations and ORs with inputs coming in here and a single output. And I'm going to replace all those little ORs by gadgets. So I've replaced an OR gate here with an inverter that its output goes to by taking the inverter gadget and having it share, its input vertex is shared with the output vertex of this OR gate. And that's the way I'm going to wire up these pieces of graph in a way that corresponds to exactly the way the gates in the circuit are connected up. OK, so let's go about understanding how these gadgets simulate uh, a circuit that's computing with, with truth values, with trues and falses. And the basic way I'm going to begin is by saying, let's build a little piece of graph that corresponds to three colors. So I just take a, a, a triangle, and since every two of these are connected to the other two, um, every, one of, every one of these is connected to the other two, um, uh, it has to have a different color from the other two. So let's just arbitrarily pick this little triangle and name the colors that I'm going to assign to it. They have to be three different colors in the three coloring, or in any coloring. Um, the co one of the colors I'm going to call false, another of the colors I'm going to call true, and the third color we'll call N for neither or neutral. So this little uh, triangle, which is going to be part of the overall graph that I'm going to build out of gadgets, is going to be the one that defines the, uh, the, the colors and, uh, and will arbitrarily designate the three colors as one of them's F, one of them's T, and one of them's N. OK. Now, suppose that I have an arbitrary uh, vertex that I'm going to be using to simulate the input or output of a gate. And I want to force this vertex P to only be colored in any coloring of the graph that involves P, that P uh, uh, can only be colored with a true or false color. Well, that's easy. I can constrain any possible satisfactory three coloring of the whole graph to have to have P be true or false colored simply by making P adjacent to the a non-true false color. So because there's a connection in a coloring, P has to have a color that differs from the neutral color, meaning P has to be true or false colored. So simply attaching uh, an edge to make P adjacent to N forces P in any proper three coloring of the whole graph, P will have to be assigned a truth value color, true or false. That lets me explain how to build an, uh, an inverter. If I want to get, if I have some vertex P that's forced to be truth valued, and I want to get some other vertex that is forced to be colored with not P, a truth value that's different from P, then all I do is, first of all, force the not P vertex to be truth valued. So I, like, like, as I did with P, I attach it to the neutral color by an, uh, this magenta edge. That means the only way to three color this whole graph is to assign not P a color that's either F or T. And then I just put an edge between P and not P. And that forces not P to have whatever the other truth value was. If P was true, then in order to not have the same color, not P would have to be false. If P was false, then not P would have to be true. So an inverter is a just the, about the most trivial piece of gadget. Uh, it's just to invert P, you attach it to another vertex. And that other vertex becomes not P when they're both constrained to be truth value. So OR is a little bit more interesting um, and ingenious. So let's look at how you build an OR gadget. So I'm going to imagine that I have two vertices, and um, uh, P and Q. And uh, I'm going to uh, restrain them so that P and Q, in any possible successful three coloring of the graph involving P and Q. P and Q have to be colored with truth colors, either true or false. I do that simply by making them adjacent to N. So this, uh, these magenta lines uh, are, are thought of as being continued to here. And I'm not drawing them because the diagram gets too clogged up with these magenta lines. But that little uh, piece of line indicates that P and Q are both adjacent to N. And therefore, the only possible way to successfully color the whole graph is to assign P either true or false and likewise 
Q either true or false. Now what I want to do is build this OR gadget where there's another third vertex and I claim that in any possible successful coloring of the graph, first of all, that this P or Q vertex is going to be constrained to be colored true or false. And in fact, the only way to color the graph is going to be to color this with the truth value of P or Q. Depending on how P and Q are colored, that's going to force the coloring of P or Q to be the appropriate color. So if P was true and Q was false, then P or Q would have to be true. Let's see how that goes. So here's the gadget that completes the OR. And what we want to check is the following claim, that in any three coloring of the piece of graph that's shown, these three colors have to be different. And P and Q and P or Q have to have colors that are either the F color or the true color. And moreover, um, if I have a three coloring of this graph, then I look at the truth values of P and Q, and I'll find that there is a three coloring of this graph, but all of them force this vertex to have the P or Q color. So whatever P and Q are, however they're colored, um, this one will be forced to be there or, but moreover, there will be a three coloring for every possible way of assigning the f true and false colors to P and Q, this is gonna work properly. So this, in effect, means that the three co the, that three coloring this graph is going to compute an OR of P and Q. And P and Q are, can be any truth values, uh, true or false each, and the coloring is going to correctly calculate the truth value in this color. Let's just work through an example to understand how it's working. So suppose that P was colored true and Q was colored false. Well, what happens next? Well, since this vertex is adjacent to the true color and the false color. It has to be colored with the neutral color in order for this to be a proper coloring. Now that I know that this is neutrally covered, has the neutral color, notice that this vertex is also adjacent first to the neutral color, but also to the true color. This one has to be colored false, so it gets a red color. And now notice that P or Q has to be truth valued and it's adjacent to a red color, P or Q has to be green. So it's correct that in any three coloring of this, of the graph that's shown, if P is green and Q is red, then P or Q has to be green, which it ought to be because that's what the OR does. But I'm not finished yet because I have to show that not only is it the case that P or Q has to be green in any three coloring, but moreover, there really is one in which uh, P or Q is green. Well, how do I do that? Well, that's easy. Uh, you can check that if I, uh, this vertex has to be uh, magenta because it's adjacent to a false and a true, and this vertex has to be false uh, uh, because it's adjacent to a true and this magenta, but I've now successfully colored the whole thing. So I could color P and Q with any truth colors that I wanted, uh, and then, uh, there, were, uh, there was a way to color the whole, three color the whole graph, but in every possible way of three coloring the whole graph, the color assigned to the output vertex had to be the OR of the colors of P and Q. Now you can check the other cases if both of these are green or both of these are red. By symmetry, it's clear that it works if, uh, if uh, the red and green are reversed. But it also behaves correctly if both of them are red and both of them are green by the same kind of elementary reasoning. So I've just exhibited and verified that my OR gadget works right. So let's go back to the circuit. What I'm going to do is take my digital circuit with OR gates and NOT gates and replace all the OR gates by OR gadgets and all the NOT gates by NOT gadgets and wire them up where, in a way that corresponds to the way the inputs and outputs in the gates are connected. I'm going to take all of the inputs to the graph, I'm going to constrain them to be truth values by attach, making them adjacent to the neutral color vertex. So that means that um, uh, in any possible three coloring of this graph that simulates the circuit, the inputs are going to have to be assigned truth values. Um, and uh, moreover, I'm going to force the output of this graph to be a true, 
And the way I'm going to do that is simply by making this output vertex adjacent to the neutral color so it can't be colored neutral and adjacent to the false color so it can't be colored false. So in any possible three coloring of this whole graph, the output is going to have to be colored true. And then from the way that the OR gates and NOT gates work, if I have uh, a true-false coloring of the input vertices, the only way to, th to three color the whole graph is to have this output vertex get colored the output of the circuit color. And since I'm now forcing that to be true, it means that this circuit, this graph is three colorable if and only if there's some way to three color the inputs with truth and false values that yields a true to come out of the circuit. So what we figured out is that this graph is, as I've constructed it from the circuit, is three colorable if and only if, if and only if the circuit uh, is satisfiable. So three colorability and satisfiability stand and fall together. Now since we uh, are very confident that satisfiability is a hard problem, it implies that we think with confidence that three colorability is hard. You are not going to find a nice algorithm that works in general on arbitrary graphs and quickly figures out whether or not they're three colorable. If you could, you could uh, check for satisfiability and therefore you could factor products of primes and you could solve all sorts of other problems which uh, no one believes are doable efficiently. Now the converse, by the way, is true as well. Um, it's not very hard to show that you can, uh, if you could do satisfiability efficiently, then you could do three colorability efficiently. So these two problems that look completely different, satisfiability of a Boolean circuit and three colorability of a graph, um, they come from different fields. They don't have anything obvious to do with each other, but from a computational point of view, they're the same problem. You can translate one into the other uh, and translate back and an algorithm that's efficient for one will automatically work efficiently on the translation. And this is really an instance of a great insight from theoretical computer science that literally hundreds if not thousands of problems from many different subject areas, uh, uh, economics, uh, algebra, uh, analysis, uh, graph theory, logic, which look completely different from the computational perspective. It's just one problem. It's just the satisfiability problem, which is why the satisfiability problem, the P equals NP problem of whether satisfiability can be solved efficiently, is considered to be the single most important problem in theoretical computer science.